Hey guys, this is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and today we're going to do a video showcasing our shaker table specifically for gold recovery. And so I've taken some clips from our past videos um, and wanted to show you guys how the shaker table worked and uh, show some different applications for it, as well as uh, we'll get some views of some pretty nice gold lines here. The high grade material in the gold is going to come across these grooves and make a line down under the water bar here into the number one high grade and number two high grade. Your sulfides and concentrates are going to come down form a band at the tips of these grooves, come down into the number three port or the middlings, and the quartz and waste material are going to come down into the tailing port. Now this is a great shot of our shaker table showing the separation of the quartz and the denser sulfides right at the bottom of that ramp that we've built into the shaker table. So you can see this really nice clear line where the quartz stops at the bottom of that ramp and is almost all flowing down into tailings. The distributor trough is tuned so that the ports are evenly feeding across the entire shaker table surface. There is a nice even flow over the grooves. There's no rivers or rapids on the shaker table top, and it's all a fairly even drip across this drip lip going into the number four tailings trough. Um, you really don't want to have any rapids or, or areas on the, on the shaker table that have higher flow than other areas. Now you're starting to see a little gold line form on the shaker table and it forms right underneath that water bar on the cleaning plane. And as we pan up the shaker table, now you can see the first long groove that captures uh, almost all the gold as well as the sulfides and brings it out onto the cleaning plane where uh, the water bar washes the sulfides back down into the number two and number three port. And as we work our way down the shaker table, you can see that gold line become much more apparent and uh, work its way right down into the number one trough uh, right here. And in uh, the two safety grooves coming across the table into the number two port, both those are high grade ports. As we work our way around the edge of the shaker table here, you can see the number three middlings port. That's where your primary amount of your sulfides is gonna go. You can see we have the splitter tuned to where you're capturing a little bit of quartz, uh, but most of the quartz is going into the number four. Just makes a real nice line of gold right down under the water bars and into the trough. Number one and number two high grade cords. These are the bigger pieces from the from the ore. And then on up here, this is actually fairly coarse here as well. And then we get up here. And this is just very, very fine smoke. We call it micron gold, call it flower gold. When we screen this, a good part of this will go through a 325 mesh screen. Okay, here's the number one uh, bucket that we got off the table. I've panned it down a little bit, but you can see in the sun, it's pretty good showing there. A lot of fine gold. We're going to take the number two and uh, rerun it. We probably got about two or three gallons of number two that we're going to rerun on the shaker table and upgrade it uh, even more. And then we'll pan that down and see what that looks like. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're taking our number two and we're rerunning it on our shaker table to clean it up. And so uh, there's a lot of sulfides in here with a little bit of gold, and we want to get rid of most of the sulfides so we don't have to deal with them. And so. We're running them on the same table that we used for our uh, uh, production run, but we're using the, the table now as a finishing table to clean up our gold and eliminate a lot of our sulfide concentrates. So I'm feeding our 
our number two right down here at the base of the, the ramp, going down about halfway down the table. And it's forming a, a nice wide band of sulfides that are running down. And we've adjusted the splitter and the trough there to capture all the sulfides and run them back into our number three middlings trough. So we're not losing any of this to tailings. This is all worth saving. But our strategy is to get as much of the free gold out as possible that you can then smelt and sell directly to a refiner rather than um, boxing up or, or putting a bunch of sulfides in a barrel and sending them off for further processing. You want to get as much free gold out as you possibly can. Okay, here's our very, very, very fine gold that we ended up with our, this is the number two concentrates from our initial run that we've rerun on the table and this is what came out in the number one port. So you can see there it's, it's, it's actually not very much gold but it's very 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 fine and makes a really nice looking crescent in the pan. It's easily 325 mesh minus almost all that gold is. Now the shaker table can also be used for upgrading concentrates from plaster operations. And so we'll walk through a couple different samples here uh, showing the shaker table being used to upgrade plaster concentrates uh, from Alaska and the Yukon. This fellow brought down 30 pounds of the material. We're running across the shaker table. And there's some really very, very fine gold in here. But some of it's uh, probably gee whiz. Even as big as 12 mesh, 16 mesh flakes that the miners missed. And then there's uh, a, a lot of really very, very fine gold as well that uh, most gravity recovery devices will not catch. And there we can see how fine some of that fine gold is. Right next to a dime there. So what do you think this, uh, this, this red is? That's the garnet. He's, he's, he's been fighting. That yeah. is the stuff that, I mean, this is amazing how that separates that because I, it's like it's the same way to gold when you're panning. When you're panning, it's really hard to get out. Yeah. This is really neat. Okay, yeah. now this stuff that is coming in here, I see it's fine garment, garnet. Yep. Yep. Would, would any of the gold be in that too? Well, there's a little there's flake. A little there's flake a little there, flake yeah. right there. Now we're going to watch, we're going to watch that and see if it comes, comes out and ends up getting across here. There's two grooves at the bottom of the table here. We call them the safety grooves. Uh -huh. Here comes that flake. Yeah, right there. So anything that that keeps keeps down here with the garnet will end up coming across here in the in the safety groove. So it'll it should never get down into the number three. No free gold should ever get down into the number three. Oh, good, real good showing. Now here I'm going to do this. I'm going to unplug the table leave the water on but now it's not shaking so we can really see what's going on here so all your gold is coming out this first groove as soon as it gets off this little sandbar a black sand it's it's caught in the in the groove it's going to come down this way there's some other really heavy stuff the black sand that might be where your pgms are it's coming down with the gold but by the time it gets down here it's pretty much all clean gold a little bit of black sand is going to carry its way down into the number two. So here's this gold that we recovered from the shaker table. And this was in addition to all the gold that he's already been able to recover by panning. So this was the gold that he actually couldn't recover by panning. And we recovered it on our 4 by 8 shaker table. So it's actually a really good showing out of a gallon of stuff. That's quite a bit of gold recovered. So now I have actually several clips from past customers uh, that I wanted to show you guys, showing our shaker table working um, at, at mine sites around the world. This first one is uh, in the US, in Utah, and this guy's running his material through a ball mill and then onto our shaker table. Nicely smooths out, nice and evenly, and we're getting the blondes down into the blondes tailing trough. When we load it up with pyrites, we get pyrites coming down into the cons crop, out the ends of the grooves. We've got a gold line here under the water bar now. 
there's quite a bit of steel coming off the ball mill that they're going to capture before it gets on the table. And so what we find then is that when there's no steel and there's pyrites, the pyrites really do a nice job of coming down into the safety grooves here into the number two hole and really pretty darn nice clean gold into the number, high, number one high grade. These fellas feel that right now we're running between one ton and one and a quarter tons per hour of slurry. They've got it screened to either minus 20 or minus 30 depending on what the screen is on the trommel at the outlet of the ball mill. So it's really nicely graded classified material coming onto the table and this gold line over here uh, is uh, out of about one third per ounce per ton of material. So that's the material they're running is one third of an ounce per ton. Okay, we stopped the table. And here's our gold line right under the water bar. You see that silvery material is actually steel out of the ball mill. And the gold line follows all the way up to the top groove. Most of the gold comes out of the top groove. There is some that comes out of the second long groove. And then when, uh, when we magnetic the steel out, it ends up being a nice clean line of gold right there. Now, here's the gold line with the high pyrite material. And we've just uh, got the magnet across it to get the, the steel off. And it's really pretty clean. It's clean as steel now. Very little pyrite. The pyrite's coming down out of the ends of the four long grooves and down into our safety grooves now so that the material going off into the high grade is, uh, is pretty darn clean. Now, here's rerunning the number one high grade hole to clean it up. We've still got some steel in there. But it is coming clean, then. Looking up here, feeding it with the trowel and catching what he can from the back. So he's working up there. We're still getting some steel down here. My right seems to be pretty clean. Cleaning up pretty well. And we've got quite a nice line of gold there. Here's another operation uh, in Egypt, uh, in Northeast Africa, and these guys are uh, running hard rock ore through a hammer mill and then down onto a shaker table. And you can see uh, at the top three grooves there, the gold collects, and then it runs out that first long groove and forms a gold line right down under the water bar on the cleaning plane, working its way right down into the number one uh, high grade port.
This is one of our shaker tables in Kenya, and uh, it's being operated at a hard rock mine, and they've run hundreds and hundreds of tons of material through the shaker table. And so I wanted to give you a shot here, uh, showing them in operation, and uh, here in a minute we'll uh, take a look at the gold line that they get on the shaker table, and also uh, the free gold that they recover in their uh, number one port. And these last couple shots are from one of our shaker tables in Maritania. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, this uh, is being run also with hard rock ore. And uh, you can see that the, most of the gold uh, comes out right in the first three grooves as it works its way down to the fourth groove uh, and up across the, the ramp onto the cleaning plane. And so the miners really, really like to see that gold uh, as soon as possible, and the first three grooves allows them to see their gold as it works its way up the shaker table. So they can see in real time the amount of gold they're getting, and, uh, and they can watch where it goes as uh, it works its way down the shaker table. I get it. Thanks for watching our video on our shaker tables and hope you guys uh, learned a little bit more about the applications and the wide range of uses for our shaker tables both in hard rock and in plaster operations. And if you have any questions or comments about what you saw in the video today, please let us know. You can find our info in the description below. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.